I, I have seconded this amendment by, uh, by um, Senator Boyan, and I'm really, really heartened by the, the, the support that uh, Senator uh, Malcolm Byrne is giving this uh, amendment this morning, because um, I certainly have spoken to a number of independent councillors in your area, and indeed uh, Senator Curran's area, who are very, very adamant that councillors should be part of this particular board. Um, so, look, at, I welcome this. I think very too, too often the county councillors are left out of really strategic, uh, important infrastructural boards that are around the country, and I think it's really, really important that we start, start looking at the expertise that we have within local government and utilising that. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Cahirlach, and I uh, thank uh, members for their uh, contributions. Uh, this amendment seeks to ensure that elected members of local authority are eligible for appointment as members of the board or a committee of the board of Mara. It is the government's intention that Mara becomes a centre of excellence for maritime usages and I'm committed to ensuring the success of the new agency. At committee stage in the Dáil, we moved a number of amendments to address concerns raised at second stage. These amendments rebalanced the proposed composition of the Mara Board to ensure a broader scope of representation and facilitate the appointment of a range of members of the Mara Board. Also during committee stage in the Dáil, deputies were advised that to ensure confidence in the governance arrangements for Mara, a governance review of the establishing provisions was being undertaken. That review focused on the code of practice for the government state bodies to ensure that the establishment of MARA applies a best practice approach in order to achieve the highest possible standards of corporate governance. As Senators will know, the Code of Practice for Governance of State Bodies covers such matters as the role of the Board and Chief Executive, Codes of Conduct, Ethics in Public Office and the body's relationship with the Oireachtas, Ministers and its parent department, as well as business and financial reporting requirements. The review found that the Bill successfully addressed the key governance requirements for a state regulatory body. It noted that the Bill provides a robust framework for the new authority, clearly delineating its corporate status, functions, structure and defining an appropriate set of relationships internally and externally. The review was completed in advance of report stage in the Dáil and a number of minor amendments were proposed and accepted at report stage which reflected the best recommendations arising from the review. These included the terms of office of board members, placing the board as a decision maker with regard to employment of a chief executive officer and reducing the time for the production of corporate strategies from five years to three. I am satisfied that the Maritime Area Planning Bill 2021 provides a best practice approach to governance of MARA from the day of establishment. While there may be requirements in the future to review the composition and corporate structure of MARA, that review should only happen once MARA has become operational and has the opportunity to show what it can achieve. Following the governance review, I have assurances that MARA as currently provided for in the text is wholly sound and balanced and I will not accept any amendments to seek to trouble this balance. I would like to add that there is nothing in legislation that prevents an elected member of a local authority from applying for the position of Chief Executive or for membership of the Board of MARA. If he or she were selected and decided to serve with MARA, then he or she could not hold their position as an elected person. This is exactly the same situation as which pertains to a member of Shannon Aaron, an elected deputy, or a member of the European Parliament. I fully appreciate the intention behind the amendments, as highlighted. The matter raised relates not only to this legislation. I note this very issue was raised last week in this House during the second stage debate on the, corporate, the company's Corporate Enforcement Authority Bill. It may be more appropriate for Senators to seek a holistic review of these standard provisions. And, as you are all aware, as Minister with Responsibility for Local Government, I am overseeing reform of the role of elected members in the context of the Moorhead Report. Colleagues, we have listened to many opinions and I fully agree that our local authority elected members do exceptional work in their localities. In that spirit, I absolutely commit to looking at the role of elected members and have done so in terms of their involvement in state boards as part of the reform programme which I have outlined many times in this House and as late as two weeks ago. However, I am satisfied that the provisions as they stand in this Bill are robust and appropriate in that context. 
Senators may wish to consider the amendment based on these comments, and I, I thank everyone for their contributions. Thank you, Kahira.